Have you ever wondered what governs our ability to reason? Well, the answer lies in a fascinating subject called logic. Logic, in essence, is the systematic study of the principles and criteria of valid inference and demonstration. It's the very framework that allows us to construct sound arguments and distinguish good reasoning from bad. Imagine a world where we couldn't differentiate between a well-reasoned argument and a poorly constructed one. It would be like navigating through a maze without a map, wouldn't it? That's why understanding logic is so crucial. It serves as the backbone of rational thinking, helping us make sense of complex ideas and communicate effectively. Logic isn't just about winning arguments or acing exams though, it's about understanding the world around us, making better decisions, and ultimately leading a more rational life. So, are you ready to dive into the fascinating world of logic and reasoning? Firstly, we will explore the law of identity. This principle at first glance seems so self-evident that you might wonder why it is even considered a law. It states that if a statement or proposition is true, then it is true. Sounds simple, right? This law forms the cornerstone of logical reasoning, providing a foundation for distinguishing truth from falsehood. It underlines the basic concept that a thing is identical to itself. If we say, a rose is a rose, we're invoking the law of identity. The rose we're talking about remains the same rose regardless of its color, size, or location. It doesn't suddenly become a tulip simply because we wish it to be. Consider a more complex scenario. If we say, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius at sea level, we're also applying the law of identity. The statement, if true, remains true in all instances where the conditions are the same. The water won't suddenly boil at a different temperature under those conditions. The truth of the statement remains consistent and unchanging. While these examples might seem straightforward, the law of identity has profound implications in various fields of study. In mathematics, for instance, it helps us understand that 2 plus 2 will always equal 4, not 5 or 3. In computer science, it assures us that a specific code will consistently perform the same function. In philosophy, this law is crucial in discussions of identity over time. It allows us to comprehend that a person remains the same individual from one moment to the next, even though their thoughts, emotions or physical state may change. The law of identity also plays a crucial role in legal contexts. It aids in maintaining the consistency of legal definitions and principles, ensuring that a contract for instance means the same thing today as it will tomorrow. So, in essence, the law of identity asserts that truth is consistent and unchanging. It underscores the fundamental understanding that things are what they are, and truth once established under specific conditions, remains unaltered. This law with its deceptive simplicity forms the bedrock of logical reasoning and the pursuit of knowledge. Moving on, let's discuss the law of non-contradiction. As the second fundamental law of thought, this law is a cornerstone of logical reasoning. It's a simple yet powerful tool that helps us make sense of the world around us. So, what is the law of non-contradiction? It asserts that a statement cannot be both true and false at the same time in the same sense. To put it more simply, a thing cannot be and not be simultaneously. This law deals with the very essence of truth and falsehood. It helps us distinguish between what is real and what is not, between what is factual and what is mere illusion or fabrication. Let's consider an example to understand this better. If I say, it is raining outside, and then I also claim, it is not raining outside, both these statements can't be true at the same time and in the same context, it's either raining or it's not both conditions cannot coexist, that's the law of non-contradiction in action. Another instance is the classic paradox of the liar. Imagine a person says, I am lying. If the statement is true, then the person is lying, which makes the statement false. But if the statement is false, then the person is telling the truth, which makes the statement true. This creates a paradox, a violation of the law of non-contradiction. This law is crucial in every field where truth matters. In mathematics, for instance, a number cannot be both even and odd. In law, a statement of fact in a case cannot be both true and false. The law of non-contradiction ensures that our thoughts, our words, our theories, our beliefs do not contradict themselves. In essence, this law acts as a guard against inconsistency, a beacon that guides us away from paradoxes and towards clear, coherent thinking. It's a fundamental principle that underpins the very possibility of logical and meaningful discourse. Hence, the law of non-contradiction ensures that a statement cannot contradict itself. Now let's delve into the law of excluded middle. This law is another fundamental concept in logic. It's a principle that asserts for any proposition, either that proposition is true, or its negation is. There's no middle ground. 
It's a black and white world in the realm of logic with no room for grays. Consider a simple statement. It is raining. According to the law of excluded middle, this statement can either be true or false. It's either raining or it's not. There's no third option. There's no room for maybe it's raining or it's sort of raining. This is the essence of the law of excluded middle. Now let's think about a scientific hypothesis. For instance, all swans are white. This hypothesis is either true or false. If we find even one swan that is not white, then the hypothesis is proven false. Again, there's no middle ground. This law is not only applicable to logic or scientific discourse, but it also permeates our everyday lives. When you switch on a light, it's either on or off. When you're taking a test, your answer is either right or wrong. However, it's important to note that while the law of excluded middle is a fundamental principle in classical logic, it's not universally accepted in all forms of logic. For instance, in fuzzy logic, which deals with reasoning that is approximate rather than fixed and exact, the law of excluded middle does not hold. This is because fuzzy logic allows for degrees of truth where something can be partly true and partly false at the same time. But in classical logic, the law of excluded middle reigns supreme. It's a principle that helps us make clear distinctions and precise judgments. It allows us to deal with reality in a straightforward, unambiguous way, slicing through confusion like a hot knife through butter. So, according to the law of excluded middle, there's no room for a maybe. Finally, we come to the law of sufficient reason. This principle of logic is quite the powerhouse, as it holds that for every fact, every event, and every truth in the universe, there must be a reason, a cause, or an explanation sufficient to justify it. So, let's break it down. Imagine a row of dominoes. Each domino falls because the one before it tipped over. It's a chain of cause and effect, and the law of sufficient reason is all about seeking out that cause, that reason. Now, let's get a bit more complex. Why is the sky blue? It's not just because it's the color we've assigned to it. There's a scientific reason. The sky appears blue because molecules in the Earth's atmosphere scatter sunlight in all directions, and blue light is scattered more than other colors because it travels in smaller, shorter waves. This is an application of the law of sufficient reason in the natural world, and we can apply this law to abstract concepts too. Why do you feel happy when you eat your favorite food? It could be because the taste triggers positive memories or because your body is receiving nutrients it needs. There's always a reason. This law is particularly useful in scientific inquiry and philosophical debates. It encourages us to probe deeper to question why until we can't anymore. But here's a thought to ponder. While we can find reasons for individual events, can we find a sufficient reason for the existence of everything? That's a heavy question, and one that philosophers have grappled with for centuries. The law of sufficient reason does not promise easy answers. But it does promise that there are answers to be found, if only we look hard enough and ask the right questions. It's a call to curiosity, a prompt for us to never stop seeking understanding. Therefore the law of sufficient reason posits that nothing happens without a reason. Let's summarize what we've learned about the rules of logic. We started off with the law of identity, which simply states that each thing is identical to itself. This fundamental law helps us understand the world around us and the essence of things. We then moved on to the law of non-contradiction, a crucial rule that ensures a proposition cannot be both true and false at the same time. This law allows us to differentiate between what is right and what is wrong. Next we delved into the law of excluded middle, asserting that a statement is either true or false, leaving no middle ground. This law helps us eliminate ambiguity and confusion. Lastly, we discussed the law of sufficient reason, emphasizing that everything must have a reason or cause. This law encourages us to seek explanations and understand why things happen. Understanding and applying these laws in our daily lives can enhance our decision-making and communication skills. Remember, logic is the key to clear thinking and effective communication. Until next time, keep reasoning. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and comment. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to keep up with the latest content.